Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com. All right, my guest this segment, Nick Santiago, President and CEO of In the Money Stocks. Nick, thanks for coming back on the show. How are you? Uh, very good, Michael. Great to be back. Thank you. Good to start off today talking about the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? Yes. I rarely ever talk about the Dow. For one reason, um, I really my work is done on the S&P 500. I'll also look closely at the NASDAQ. But I just wanted to um, reiterate to your listeners, a while back I had talked about when the Dow Jones leads the market higher, it's usually a warning sign of things to come. Today, uh, the markets have had a wild ride. Actually, this whole week leading up to options expiration, tomorrow it's been a wild ride. But the Dow today is up over 1% where the NASDAQ is just up four-tenths of 1%, and uh, that is always problematic for the future. So uh, just to give everybody a heads up, whenever money is going into the Dow Jones, it's usually money that's being parked um, for safety reasons. They're going to collect a dividend, wait for the smoke, what they have left over. It's just blue-chip stocks. When you're trading the Russell 2000 or the NASDAQ, you're putting money into risky assets uh, that don't pay a dividend. You're looking for growth. Uh, not established money. So anytime Dow is leading the market, it's always just a warning sign of things to come. Okay, so I'm getting the feeling when you say a warning sign, you're not talking about a war of possible warning of a uh, pullback. Oh, yeah, a, a further downside, early lower. Now, one of your one of your real staunch dyed-in-the-wool fans, Nevada, sent me an email, uh, actually commented on a blog I posted on our social network site the other day, and his uh, question was, do you think that we may have the right shoulder of an inverted head and shoulders about ready to get set up here on the S&P market? Uh, I, I don't see that, and, and I'll tell you why. I've been asked that question by a few people, in fact, today as well. Um, one reason why is if you take, I think what he's looking at is a left shoulder beginning on May 29th and then uh, connecting that uh, pivot to the other shoulder on June 11th, if you draw that line and that line is ascending, meaning it's going from a lower side, uh, left side, to a higher right side, um, head and shoulder patterns that work are always flattening on inverses. They're never ascending. Ascending necklines mean that, yeah, maybe the stock trades up or the index trades up a little bit, but it is not going to play out to fruition. And I've got to be honest, Mike, I've been trading 20 years. Um, I could count on one hand the times I've ever seen those patterns play out. Okay, so let, now let's get into it because for a, quite a while you and I have been bantering about this business about the 25th or so in regards to a cycle date. Many months, many, many, many months. Now we're closing in on it. I wanted to get your feeling of where we go bef before we move on to the other markets. If we start to sell off, and I'm under the impression that a sell-off is coming soon, um, what I posted out to my traders was to look for a bounce, um, beginning last week throughout Options X into early next week. And I'm going to stick with that forecast so far. Um, we're, we're just really consolidating sideways on the S&P on up. Um, if, if you remember, even on the 11th of this month, which was Monday, we had that big gap up and, it, and the market sold off on a big reversal day. We still haven't gotten even through that high. But I do think there's a chance to get through that high, but ultimately setting up for the next leg down into the end of this month. As for the 25th, 26th, it is a pivotal time, but I do think that we could see weakness really right through the end of the month. Okay. All right. Well said. All right. The next market you wanted to talk about today was the USO, right? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the USO because it's getting a little bit of a bounce. And what I want to say is that the pattern on the USO still looks horrible right now. It's not a very strong pattern by any means. The USO has just come off the lows barely because the U.S. dollar index off. Pound oil up. It's very inflationary. Um, all the oils, or else British pound, both are, are very, very inflationary. The dollar is the reserve currency. So basically, oil is getting a little bit of a bid here, but oil is setting up. Um, it really uh, looks to me like it really wants to go lower here. So I would be very, very careful with oil the next uh, few days to maybe early next week. Maybe oil gets a little bit more of a bounce. So making any real headway to the upside here. Well, what about target side then? If it's not, if you're not looking for a lot of strength, twenty five dollars. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, at the USO price, or is that's, that that's the USO price? Oh. No, not that's the USO price. If you're looking at spot crude, that would potentially um, be to around seventy bucks, maybe sixty five. 
Now, I know a lot of people would love to pick up crude at 60 for barrel. Yeah, well, they're going to have a chance. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now the NASDAQ, the QQQ. Yeah, I want to take a look at the Qs today. Um, as I said earlier with the Dow Jones, the Qs are actually um, lagging the markets a little, lagging the Dow Jones. And whenever I see the, um, the Qs behaving this way, it, it's just confirming what I'm already thinking um, as the market should be headed lower. Um, the Q could have upside um, a little bit more into early next week, a strong possibility. And then I do think that um, the markets are headed lower. 50-day moving average on the Qs looks very, very enticing. Sometimes if the market uh, you know, has a strong thrust, maybe we'll get through there a little bit, um, but not much higher than that on the daily chart. Okay. All right. Got it. The uh, question that I've been asking, if we're, we're, we're generally bearish on the overall tone here, is which one of these markets, whether it's the Russell, it's the NASDAQ, or it's the Dow, or it's the S&P, which one do you think is going to give us the biggest bang for our trade? The Russell, undoubtedly, because Russell is small business, uh, going to be hurt the most. The chart looks horrible. I believe the Russell followed by the NASDAQ, and then um, ultimately the Dow will go down. You know, we're not going to, you know, after these moves, we'll get bounces. That'll be significant. You'll get these again. And, um, but the downside here is going to be pretty robust for the rest of the year. Okay, so all the way out the rest, the rest of the year. You're not looking for a mid, uh, midsummer bounce. No, I, I think we could get that. I mean, um, okay. you, you could, you, you should, we should expect it. So uh, we should expect at least some kind of summer, short summer last all that long. Okay. All right. I got that part. All right. Now, Apple, you had something to say about that co that stock? Well, I want to talk a little bit about Apple because we brought it up, um, I guess, over the last couple of weeks. We've been, we've been uh, talking a, about Apple a little bit. I think the 600 level is, I just don't see any more upside in the stock. Then. It really, it may not even get up there. It already has inside bars on the day from the um, sell-off on the 11th. Today, the stock is struggling. The Dow's up 157 points. The NAS, uh, Apple can't even can't even catch a bid. His stock's negative by twenty cents, so um, it, it's just looking worse and worse. Apple, in my opinion. Well, you know, Nick, you're you're you've been talking top in this thing since it started to hit the six hundred dollar level. Absolutely right. It's been over, and now it, it looked a lot weaker than it had back in March when everybody was saying, "No way, this thing could go up forever." Play this market, though. I mean, our, our, this this stock. Around you, around the 600 level, um, the way to do it is there's a couple of ways. One, you can go short the Qs, which Apple is a big component of the Qs. It, it represents about 20% or 19%, some huge amount. So you could, you could go short the Qs if you don't want to play $600 stock. You could also buy puts on this stock um, be out till uh, September, October. Um, you could buy some puts or some leaps out to that time frame. And then another way is just to short the stock. So, I mean, there's three opportunities, three chances, uh, three different ways of playing that. Good. I'm glad you brought that out. Now, last but certainly not least, JJC. Yeah, JJC is copper. Um, the stock's having a nice little move today as it's poised. And I'm telling you, the dollar's getting poised to move up into that 85 to $89 level, ultimately. And that's where the JJC should get clobbered again. So, um, just sit tight. Let this thing base a little while. It's sitting right around the 42 to 43 level. It's in, sitting at 42.70. But ultimately, this thing is a stone cold short. And I, I honestly believe it's going to trade down to. You go give everybody a way to reach you and get into the trading room to watch you pull the trigger on these trades. Yeah, come on over to In the Money Stock. Uh, take a seven day free trial to our intraday stock chat. You'll see our computer screens. We'll let you know everything that we're doing. Go videos up there each night. Uh, you'll get all the levels. you get my partner's levels, all of our trade setups. You'll also get our proprietary cycle work. I don't know what, how much more anybody could want. Uh, once you come in, rarely do people go, go back and leave. No, I have, I have nothing but huge, huge compliments off your work. And we, we're, all they have to do is listen to the, uh, to the archives here to see that you're very, very good at what you do. Nick, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Thank you for having me, Michael. Appreciate my, it. My pleasure. Everybody, Nick Santiago, president and CEO of InTheMoneyStocks.com. Go there, check out this, uh, this man's trading. Watch him pull the trigger on these trades.